Game of Thrones fans have been creating their own versions of the show's finale ever since the series ended. That's not too surprising, though, since many of us were disappointed with how the creators ended things. Well, now it seems we've finally gotten a look at what we deserved. George Martin's original outline of the ending will reveal just how much better the finale could have been. Let's dive into the video to learn more. First off, the GOT finale we deserved but didn't get. It's no secret that Game of Thrones, despite being one of the most beloved TV series of all time, had a terrible ending. The series' Rotten Tomatoes rating never fell below 90%, yet its final episode only received a measly 4.0 IMDb rating. The original intent of George R. R. Martin for his source novels may ultimately provide readers with a taste of what could have been. The first book in Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire trilogy, which carried the same name as the show, served as the inspiration for HBO's Game of Thrones series. His most recent book, A Dance with Dragons, was published in 2011. The Winds of Winter and A Dream of Spring, his final two books, have yet to be published. Though Martin served as a producer and consultant for the show, occasionally contributing to their scripts, the HBO showrunners decided to invent their own conclusion for Game of Thrones due to a lack of source material, which was dramatically different from what the fans were expecting. Following up, will the real book have a different ending than the series finale? Although the conclusion of A Song of Ice and Fire is still unknown, logic suggests that it'll differ from the controversial Game of Thrones climax. But Martin's initial plan for his book series may provide some insight into the course of the last two volumes. While some of the letters have been blacked out, Martin penned a letter to his publisher in 1993 that has been made available for reading. He discusses his initial plan for the series, which was once only intended to be a trilogy. It's grown tremendously to at least seven novels since 1996. Since he first saw A Song of Ice and Fire, a lot has changed. Moving on, what events have been changed from the original outline? Buckle up, these changes will definitely surprise you. Following Tyrion's removal of Joffrey from the Iron Throne, Jaime assumed control of the throne by murdering everyone else one by one before blaming Tyrion for the crimes. Then Tyrion changed his mind and sided with the Starks. By the conclusion of the first book, Bran was supposed to have been installed with Tyrion's assistance onto the Iron Throne. In the show, Bran the Broken became king of the Six Kingdoms at the conclusion of the series after consenting to the North's independence. Fans have waited years for Martin's more recent works. There'll probably be a ton more waiting in store for fans before they could read the conclusion of A Song of Ice and Fire because he said in October that he's 75% done with The Winds of Winter. The seventh has no set schedule. Until Martin's final two volumes are published, which might be at least 10 years from now, nobody will know what he has in store for his conclusion. Up next, how the show should have ended according to fans. Starting off number 15 is Arya should have taken out Danny. Most of Arya Stark's time on Game of Thrones was spent developing her fighting skills, and viewers were eager to see it in action in the final season. One theory even predicted that Arya would kill Danny, which would have been a significant shock. But the Night King and Danny? That'd be too much limelight for Arya, wouldn't it? At number 14 is Bran Stark, is actually the Night King. Compared to what we received, this idea would have been considerably more interesting, and we can understand why someone may have thought this. Bran Becoming the Night King after barging into him would have saved countless lives along the road and given the baffling Stark character a new dimension. Plus, at number 13 is Danny not having such a drastic turn. We can't blame the many fans who appear to agree with this. Danny's turn doesn't have enough buildup and, as a consequence, comes out as being overly severe. This argument is based on Danny not making such a severe swing and entirely abandoning her own character, so it wouldn't really alter anything. It could have meant that the ending would have been a lot happier for everyone. On number 12 is Danny Becomes the Night Queen. To witness this would have been wild. According to this theory, Danny would have lost her dragons and turned into the Night Queen, joining her offspring and wreaking havoc on Westeros. It would have added a ton of spectacle to the conclusion and caused viewers to pick up their jaws from the floor. Moving on to number 11 is Danny and John rule together while White Walker toddlers lie in wait. According to this theory, a Targaryen, like the Lannisters before them, would have sat on the throne of Westeros and had a member of their family serve as both their hand and their lover. The children of Craster would have lived and given way to a new menace in waiting, but Danny and John would have shared power in Westeros. One of the show's fans said that he's such a sucker for good endings that he actually thought Danny and John would just reign together. And as a result, Sansa would still have the autonomous north. He said that he knows that the Mad Queen thing definitely made for a more fascinating storyline, but he still hated witnessing Danny's demise 
considering all she's gone through and how much stronger she was as a result. He still hoped that they would govern together or, at the least, that John would leave his claim to the throne so that she might rule alone. And number 10 is Gendry takes the Iron Throne. This theory might sound a bit crazy, but Gendry Baratheon, who kept his identity secret, does end up getting to assume his proper place at Storm's End. This theory takes things to the next level and has Gendry take the throne that his father Robert had held at the start of the series. He'd rule Westeros from the Iron Throne. Up next on number 9 is Jaime should have taken out Cersei. This was controversial and had to be included on our list because so many people disagreed with it. Jaime Lannister ought to have carried out the prophecy and eliminated Cersei by himself before returning to be with Brienne. Instead, the writers ignored any hint of Jaime's character growth. Following up at number 8 is Danny and John destroy the Iron Throne together. Danny frequently discussed breaking the wheel, and it would have been magical to witness this theory come true. Instead of assuming the Iron Throne, John and Danny would have collaborated to demolish it. This idea also suggested that Danny's goal for the whole series was to abolish the Iron Throne rather than occupy it. According to one fan, Daenerys and John should have destroyed the Iron Throne since the wheel would be shattered as a result. The fan continued that the plot should have concluded with the final two Targaryens in the world discovering one another, toppling the throne, and so putting an end to the game. As part of the theory, Danny and John would have used their dragons to burn the throne, and Rhaegal would have survived. The story would come full circle when the wheel was broken since the throne had been constructed by Dragonfire and subsequently destroyed by Dragonfire. One reviewer said that it would have been smart if, throughout the entire story, we were led to believe that Danny wanted to sit on the Iron Throne when in reality, all she wanted to do was to destroy it. And number seven on the list is John takes the Iron Throne. According to this theory, Jon Snow is the only Targaryen left alive in the world. As per the Azor High prophecy, he would accept the Iron Throne because of his legitimate claim that would result from this. Fans would have approved of this, and it would have been fascinating to see Jon reclaim his role as a leader. Plus, at number 6 on the list is Jon becomes the Night King. The majority of Jon's time on Game of Thrones is spent trying to find out how to deal with the Night King, so it would have been insane to have him turn into the height of evil in Westeros. It may have resulted in a more intriguing conclusion for Jon character arc and brought a hint of bittersweetness to the show. Following up on number 5 is Sansa bends the knee to Danny, who conquers King's Landing without fire. A much more natural ending to the series would have been to have Danny earn Sansa's respect after she risked everything to save the North and the rest of the realm. Sansa would then have bent the knee and helped Danny out. Westeros would then be overtaken by the last Targaryen, who would have gotten her place on the Iron Throne. Next, at number 4 on the list is Sansa wins the throne because because she actually deserved it. Most people found Sansa's betrayal of her brother in the series finale to be bad writing. This theory helps to add more sense to her choice because she just assumed the role of Queen of Westeros. She has a variety of political experiences and has studied under players who are experts in the field. Her final defection was so pointless. Then at number 3 on the list is Sansa gives birth to a Bolton. Both Sansa and the audience would have had to cope with this. According to this theory, Ramsay Bolton, who treated Sansa horribly is the father of her unborn child. It would have been something that developed during the course of the last season. Moving on to the second best theory on our list, Sansa marries Gendry. This theory dates back to the first season, when Sansa's father, Ned, discusses the kind of guy he hopes his daughter will date. Even if Gendry and Arya had a clear connection, a union between Baratheon and Stark would have been a full circle event that may have had significant consequences for the show's final season. Taking up the number one spot on the list is Tyrion a secret Targaryen and gets the Iron Throne. Despite being a clumsy fool who continued to make enormous mistakes throughout the course of the final few seasons, Tyrion managed to survive and amass a tremendous amount of power. According to this theory, he genuinely has Targaryen ancestry, and as such, he's a legitimate claim to the Iron Throne and may conceivably rule Westeros. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think about George R. R. Martin's original outline? Comment below, give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.